Hello everyone, this is Qi Jing. Today I'm going to talk about our code paper on provably efficient reinforcement learning with linear function approximation. This is a joint work with Joanne Yang, Darren Wang, and Michael Jordan. These are the pictures of my wonderful collaborators, and Joanne Yang will also be on the job market next year. Okay, so in real life, we typically face a, a class of problem called sequential decision making, where you need to make a lot of decisions in a sequence. And it can be when you're doing some robotics tasks or when you're trying to play some games. So a typical framework for solving those problems is called reinforcement learning. And there are a lot of classical algorithms like value iteration, queue learning, and a policy gradient. Reinforcement learning are those frameworks where you have both agents and the environment, and they're trying to interact with each other sequentially. We usually, in theory, study the model called the Markov decision process, which have states, action, and horizon, transition probability, and rewards. We can take this chess game as an example. Let's suppose we're playing against a fixed opponent. And in those case, the states are the positions of pieces in this chess game. And the action is uh, you want to move each, like each piece to different position. Okay. The reward is uh, after you play the game, if you win the game, you're going to have reward one. Otherwise, you receive the reward zero. So the goal of reinforcement learning is we want to find the best policy. In this case, is uh, in each different states, in each different position, what is the optimal action you're going to pick? so that we can maximize the cumulative rewards in those scenarios like you want to win as many times as possible in a long run. Okay. So in this talk, we will talk about how to design a better reinforcement learning algorithms. Specifically, we want to design provably efficient algorithms in a function approximation setting. So there are two, two keywords. One is uh, provably efficient. The other one is uh, function approximation. I will explain them in very shortly. So first, what is approval efficient algorithms? By efficient, we actually mean two efficiency. The first one is sample efficiency. Imagine like um, in in a lot of scenario, like in, in robotics, in the first scenario, we want to we want this robot to learn how to fold those top. And it can take a, a very long time, like it take 20 minutes to just uh, fold one top. It can like then you can collect just one sample. In a second scenario, like you want to learn the autonomous driver, very good. And uh, you have a car that's doing autonomous drive and you don't want to, it to like crash. Uh, otherwise, uh, you're gonna pay a lot of money for this crash. So in both scenarios, collecting samples can be very expensive, either very time consuming or you need to cost a lot of money. So we want to design efficient algorithms that use as less samples as possible, as few samples as possible. And second is a computational efficiency. We typically know when, when training reinforcement learning models, we usually use deep neural networks. Training a very small tasks usually costs weeks. So we also want to our algorithm to be computational efficient. Okay. So we say an algorithm is a proven efficient algorithm if it can provably find near optimal policy with a small number of uh, sample and runtime. So okay, we want both sample efficiency and computational efficiency. And the second thing is about function approximation. So in order to talk about function approximation, we need to first uh, talk about its opposite. What do we mean by tabular reinforcement learning? Tabular reinforcement learning usually refer to the classical setting where we have number of both number of states and action to be very small. So like in typical, like in tic-tac-toe, we only have like order 100 or 10 or 100 number of states and only like a 10 number of actions. And in those scenarios, because the number of states and action are small, so if we look at those value functions, which is expected rewards starting from each state action pair, we can write this value function as a table where each column is a, is the S is the states and each row is a action A where the value is this Q value. And in those tabular reinforcement learning setting, we know with when paired with some 
good exploration strategy like upper confidence bound, classical algorithms like value region or Q learning is going to find the epsilon optimal policy very efficiently. Typically, they only, they only need to be poly H, which is length of each game, number of states S, and number of action A over epsilon square, where epsilon is the accuracy of the optimal policy. One very most important thing is uh, the sample complexity of those algorithms actually scales linear in terms of S. And computational, efficient, computational uh, complexity is more or less the same as the number of samples. So, however, when we move from those type of settings to practice, we notice in a lot of practical applications, the number of states is actually enormous. For example, in Atari games, we typically face 10 to the 100 number of states. So if we have any algorithm scale linear with number of states, that's going to be impractical to impractical to learn those games. And moreover, we realize that when we train to play those Atari games, most of states are not visited even once. So we actually re require a new mechanism to learn those reinforcement learning tasks. We want to generalize knowledge from those visited states to unvisited states. That's why we introduced a new mechanism called function approximation, which we use uh, some function in some function class to approximate the value function. Just, just, just record that here because we have an enormous number of states and action we cannot precise, we can no longer precisely represent it as a table because of efficiency problems. However, we can still approximate by some function in some function class as long as the function class is simple enough. It turns out, although this idea is pretty simple, but in order to understand what it's doing behind it, it's pretty challenging. Existing theoretical results fall in two, fall, fall in two categories. They kind of like all have some parts which are not that satisfactory. The first class typically assumes the access to some representative data. They can be generated model, like simulator, or can be like in a classical work of fitted curation where they assume your data is sampled from some mu distribution, uh, where for any policy pi, you have this ratio upper bounded. So that means um, your data is kind of like already did the, already covers all state action pairs in some sense. And for those, uh, with those assumptions, you don't really require exploration. However, those assumptions are really difficult to justify in practice, or maybe they just will not hold in practice. The second class of theoretical work is more generic. They're, they work for a lot of different class, function class. However, they are not computational efficient. Like for Olive, in this paper, they, they actually they provide sample efficient algorithms for all the algorithms with low Bellman rank, but they are not computational efficient. So this comes to the main question of this paper. Can we design provably efficient algorithms without those artificial data representative assumptions. We just want a proof of efficient algorithm with function approximation. So this work will, uh, will provide a positive answer to these questions in a relatively basic setting, that is uh, with linear function approximation. So what is a linear function approximation? We're saying there's an underlying feature representat representation where the feature map of uh, this phi function of each state and action. And our value function, Q function, is just a linear function of this uh, underlying feature map. It turned out this uh, function class or this linear function approximation is uh, frequently used in practice. For example, in this Tetris games, you can build a lot of good linear feature, like by counting how many holes you have, how many pieces you have in the game, and uh, how many, for example, how many rows you have. And it turns out that this value approximation did pretty well for those Tetris games. And in this paper, we actually consider a model called linear MDP, and we use the classical algorithm called least square value iteration for this linear function approximation. What do we mean by linear MDP is uh, we make the assumption that both the rewards and the transition in this Markov division process are linear. By linear rewards, we mean the rewards is a linear function in terms of this feature map. By linear transition, it's a little bit more tricky uh, what we assume is uh, this uh, transition, transition of the uh, next state's condition on current state S A is a linear function in terms of uh, it's an inner product between the feature map phi 
and some d-dimensional measure um, called mu. Okay. And it turns out that those uh, those assumptions, both assumption um, conditions will hold definitely in the tabular MDP, also in some more general like simplex feature space. Another mechanism in our algorithm is called exploration, where basically you should not only exploit what we already discovered so far, you should also try some new states, new possibilities in order to find the, the optimal policies. The classical algorithm to this uh, exploration, um, there's a one very simple algorithm called epsilon greedy, that is uh, with majority probability, you're gonna just take greedy action based on what you already know so far. And with some small probability epsilon, you take some random ex action to explore. Those uh, strategy turns out to be very, perform very well in the banded literature. However, in the reinforcement learning, those exploration strategies should turn out to be super inefficient. It can be, in worst case, require two to the h number of samples where h remembers like the length of the game, in the worst case, to learn the near optimal policies. So this is why we turn to a more sophisticated exploration algorithm called upper confidence bound. So those will, this will give us our final guarantees, which we're saying in the linear MDP, if we run the algorithms that is a least squares value iteration with the upper confidence bound exploration strategy, <coughs> our algorithm is going to find the epsilon optimal policy within this number of episodes, that is d cube h fourth over epsilon square, where again, h is the length of each game, and d is the dimension of the feature. Epsilon is the suboptimality like you can tolerate for finding the optimal policy. We note very importantly, our, our theorems do not make any artificial assumption on like a, how data is acquired like, and how data is already recovering all the states. We're gonna do the exploration by ourselves. And uh, another thing is that our guarantee has absolutely no dependence on number of states. So it can apply to the real setting where the number of states is like millions, billions, so main takeaway of our results is uh, we provide the first provably efficient algorithms for linear function proximity setting. And very importantly, our algorithm is with polynomial sample and the runtime. Okay. To do a summary, we now have a provably efficient algorithm for linear function approximation now. We kind of like, we have some understanding about function approximation, but in the simple linear function proximity setting. Our algorithm is very simple, just least square value iteration plus UCB, and we need to work under the linear MDP assumptions. And our sample complexity is this, which very important is independent of number of states and action. Okay, and this uh, finished my talk. If you're interested, feel free to look at our paper on archive and attend post section. Thank you.